Hello everybody, this is Taran, here to give you a short introduction into Vintage Stories Creative Mode. As you might know, its purpose is to allow freeform building without limitations. The most straightforward way to do that is to hit E on your keyboard to open the creative inventory. This will show you all available blocks in the game. Select the block that you like, place it in your hotbar, use your mouse wheel to select the right block, hit right click to place the block, hit left click to break the block. Then if you press the F3 key on your keyboard, it, you can fly in any direction. You can press F3 again to enter fly and no clip mode, which lets you go through blocks. And hit F3 a third time to leave that mode again. You can also press F2 to increase your walk or fly speed and F1 to decrease it again. Now once you've got a grip on those basic mechanics, you might want to uh, look into the world edit GUI. This one can be opened using the tilde key, which is usually the key below the escape key. This will open up three dialogues. On the right hand side you get to see a bunch of options, for example the picking range. If you set that to a really high value, you will be able to select really far away blocks. You could also change the fog color to have a purple sky. On the left hand side is a number of tools and an undo and redo action, which will let you undo and redo actions made by those tools. For example, let's try the paintbrush. As soon as you click on it, you get to see a preview, and this is the blocks it will fill when you right click with a block in hand. So let's do that, and you get to see we have now filled uh, a large area with those red blocks. You can also press escape and move around freely and still place uh, blocks that way. Or, and you, you enter back in using tilde key to change your uh, current tool or its settings. Uh, each of those tools have a number of settings up here. So for example, if we select replace non-air and we right click again, you get to see it only replaces the blocks in this within the selections which are not air. There is also a whole number of shapes, for example cubites, and now we have a square floor. And of course you can select a different size. You can change this number either by using your mouse wheel, writing a number or using those keys, uh, those buttons, I mean. Then, furthermore, there is a depth limiting feature. So, for example, if you select top layer, we select um, uh, a large size, and then let's use the structural stone brick and right click here, you get to see it only replaced the top layer of this selection. Furthermore, there is a cutout feature, which would let you uh, create dome-like structures. For example, let's set those two two lower than the size, and maybe let's use glass for it so we can look inside. Hit right click, and you get to see it's uh, in, in hollow inside. But now it also replaced those blocks. So maybe let's undo that again and select replace air, and now we have it uh, leaving the floor. Up next is the airbrush tool, which is mostly useful for placing plants and flowers. So let's maybe get some grass here, perhaps medium grass. Select the paintbrush tool, um, set this to any face, add blocks, right click on the ground and you get to see we added, placed a bunch of grass within a certain radius. You can also um, place any blocks you want to really, so let's take this shirt stone bricks, right click, you see it placed a bunch of random stone bricks on top of our uh, other blocks. So let's, we can undo this again and use mode replace blocks to just replace existing blocks. And lastly there is a directional apply. If you select here only on selected face, maybe let's use the glass and right click here, you see it only replaced everything that faced the side I was pointing at. If we undo it again and let's say I um, select this face here, you see it only applied everything facing in that direction. Up next we have a line tool which lets you create straight lines of props. If I press left click we set a start position, right click we select the end position. Now this current mode is line strip so I can just keep clicking right click to continue drawing lines because it always sets the, the new starting point at the end point. But alternatively, you can also select as defined, 
which means I select a start position here, select an end position, and the start position remains the same. And there is also an option to insert placing, remove it also. Let's click on that, and you see we have a cutout. Up next is the eraser tool, which works very similar to the paintbrush, but instead of placing, it removes blocks. So if I were to left click here, you get to see we have a hole in that shape. Next is the flat fill tool, which is mostly useful for creating lakes. So for example, let's assume this would not be flat, but a hole. Maybe we just delete quickly uh, all those purple blocks or red. Uh, let's click, so it's simply select a block, make select a big area, create a hole here. Well, that is too deep of a hole. <laughs> uh, you can do like that, whatever. So, uh, and maybe one smaller area, like this. And now let's use the flat fill tool. Maybe let's try to make a lake, so we select water. I have the flat tool active. Right click on the place you want it to, and now we got ourselves a pretty lake. This works also in three dimensions. So if we go over here and enter our dome, select mode cubic, and you right click, you see our whole dome is filled with water. Now, what happens if you press on an empty area? You get to here see this error. Cannot flat fill here, not enclosed area. So if you want, you can disable the check and close the test. And if you right click, it places a whole lot of water. <laughs> okay, let's undo that again. Um, okay, up next is the raise lower tool. This lets you raise and lower terrain. Maybe we take some grass block in hand. Right click and you get to see a cylinder like that. A more fitting uh, use is the pyramid mode. And if you right click, you see we have a small pyramid. And if you keep clicking, you get to see how we raise the terrain. Um, let's increase the radius some more and the depth, and you get to immediately say how useful this can be for creating mountains. Up next is the Grow and Shrink tool. This is similar to the Raise Lower tool, but it works in three dimensions. So it's best demonstrated with a kind of vertical line. So let's fly up high, and I will type a command name slash ve block. This will place a block under my feet, and now I have uh, the ability to select that block using the line tool. Right click as the starting point, but maybe want to place blocks, and right click, right up uh, first, left click, and right click. Okay, now we got it. So now we have almost a vertical line. Let's go back to our row shrink tool. Maybe we select the radius of 3 for now. Right click on this block and you see that line kind of gets thicker. Maybe let's increase our radius a little bit and you see you could make a thick line out of it. Uh, there also is a mode that lets you select only, uh, replace only selected blocks. So what we could do for example is use the paintbrush, replace a certain area of our vertical lines with red blocks, perhaps without cutout however. There we go. And now use the shrink tool just below, but perhaps with soil and the right mode. And now you can see the red blocks remain unchanged. Up next is the erode tool, which is most useful to again create realistic terrain. So let's say you have made a really big ball using the paintbrush. Of course we should probably use the fill mode. Now we have a really big ball. Let's say we want to make this more natural. The Eero tool is quite useful in achieving that. You right click in the area and you see it kind of literally like erodes away the shape which makes it look a bit more natural. And there are several options to increase the radius or how often it should repeat that. And up next, let's look at the tree tool, which lets you place a few pre free, a few pre-configured trees. So let's maybe select a fir, 
uh, make you always sure to hold the block in hands, right click on the ground and you get to see a tree has been placed. You can uh, select um, a minimum and maximum size here, which can be really any one, any size, so maybe let's make a really small one. And let's also try a really massive one. So you can literally make any kinds of size trees you want. Those trees are generated using a procedural tree generator and you can also add your own if you uh, look into the assets and uh, try and figure out the values for those. Okay, so uh, up next perhaps we look at the select tool. By the way, you see the tooltip also will explain you some of the things that I've been telling you here. In this case, um, we need for the select tool we need a magic wand, so let's open the creative inventory, pick up the magic wand so we can select things. Perhaps we will select this a small tree. So hit left click to select the start position, hit right click to select the end position, and you see we selected a certain area. Now we probably want to select everything so you can uh, have here a number of buttons to modify that selection. If you press up U plus, you will grow the selection in the up direction. If you were to press D plus, you would grow that selection in the down direction. And, con and if you shrink it, you see it uh, shrink in the down direction. Okay, uh, this is now even with the ground. And now we could copy this into clipboard using this button. And then you can use the import tool and press here from clipboard to have this tree selected. And now you can place it. Uh, can place duplicates of this tree. And of course you could also select a file here to, uh, to import a uh, external asset. And also you, what you can do is you can drag and drop uh, uh, schematic files into the game while the import tool is active and that will work just as well. Okay, uh, now up next let's look at the move tool. This one lets you move selections, so if we uh, now hit V on our keyboard, you get to see a hut has been opened that tells you in which direction you're looking at. So let's say we want to move this tree in this direction, which is west in this case. Press west and the tree is getting moved in the west direction. You can also select a mount so that you can press less often. And there's also the ability to, to just move the selection alone. Uh, okay, let's copy this one more time and place it over here to have some free space. Of course, we need to click select from clipboard, have it placed here, and let's select it one more time. Okay, copy, and now uh, let's try out the the repeat tool which lets you copy a selection multiple times in a certain direction. So let's say you want this tree, I mean of course it's not ideal for trees but for example most useful for walls or similar. Uh, if you want to copy this, multi multiply this tree in, for example in a north direction, you select repeat, keep current selection in five north and you've got it copied five times towards north. And you could do this for every direction if you wanted to, even the up direction. <laughs> then there is also, uh, let's undo this again, there is also the option to uh, mirror it, so it creates a mirror on, on each time it copies. Or uh, And you can also modify the behavior of the current selection, so if you say growth move selection, and you duplicate it, you see the selections have been moved to that one. Okay, that concludes my short introductions. If you have questions, as always, feel free to drop by on our Discord server. Link is on winterstory.at. Thank you, goodbye.